Together, Disney and Pixar have created some of the most nostalgic movies of all time. But even the cute and lovable shows of our childhood have a few dark secrets. Welcome back friends, I'm your host Kennedy and today we are going down memory lane and potentially ruining your childhood as we count down the top 10 evil Disney Pixar theories that will make you question everything. Let's get started. Coming up in our number 10 spot, Up. I'm pretty sure that any living and breathing person on the planet felt something when they watched Up. I mean, the montage of Carl and Ellie's life together could pull at the heartstrings of even the most cynical human. Not to mention the arrival of the adorable boy scout Russell, who managed to help grumpy old Carl find the joy in life again. And while the story of the balloon lifting them up and taking them to Paradise Falls at first seems like a wholesome and magical event, there are some out there who theorize the story might not be quite as uplifting as what we've all come to believe. The evil theory suggests that Carl is actually dead the whole time, but that he's unable to pass into the afterlife. So in comes Russell, who isn't a young scout trying to earn his wilderness explorer badge, but actually an angel trying to earn his wings by bringing Carl up to heaven or paradise. The theory then goes on to explain that Charles Muntz, the mad explorer, is really a fallen angel hell bent on dragging Carl to the underworld with his hellhounds. I mean, as if this movie didn't make me cry enough, the idea that Carl is already dead and that the bad guy is trying to drag him down to hell the whole time is definitely not something I want to be true. Next up at number 9, Inside Out. Out of all the wild and evil fan theories I have come across, this Inside Out theory is definitely one I would have never seen coming. In the movie, the main character Riley has just moved from Minnesota to San Francisco with her family and she's deeply unhappy. Now in the movie, it's said that they moved because of her dad's job. However, there is a theory that they actually moved because Riley's mom committed credit card fraud. The reason behind this seemingly out of this world theory, apparently on the back of Riley's mom's credit card, the signature reads, K. Ann Anderson, which some people online have pointed out is Bonnie's mom's name in Toy Story 3. However, Riley's mom's name is Jill Anderson, so why would she have a credit card with a different name on it unless she is a credit card stealing criminal who forced her family to move quickly to a new city to avoid being caught? I mean, is it potentially a bit of a stretch? For sure, but that would make it all the more evil if it turned out to be true. Coming in at number 8. Boo. The lovable babbling Boo is easily one of my favorite characters in Monsters Inc. But what's interesting about her is that aside from Sully being her monster, we actually don't really know anything about her. But that hasn't stopped fans from trying to find clues. The theory is that Boo, whose real name is apparently Mary, appears to have superpowers like appearing out of nowhere, and theorists claim that Boo is actually a crossover character from the Incredibles universe. But here is where it gets even weirder. Some out there believe that Boo is actually Edna's daughter. Now we know Edna isn't too fond of tiny humans, so the theory claims that Edna put Boo up for adoption to the superhero Thunderhead, who Edna mentions is good with kids, and whose file also says he has adopted five of them. I mean, maybe it's not that evil, but it's definitely strange and definitely has me questioning everything. Coming in at number 7, Toy Story. There are a lot of theories out there specifically about Toy Story, like that Andy's dad is dead or that the entire franchise is an allegory for the Illuminati, to name a few. However, one of the most evil ones out there is the Toy Corpse theory. If you haven't heard of it before, it was first theorized after a post to Twitter by the user at Stigib3 that said, quote, my daughter just ruined Toy Story forever. She said if one of the toys died, Andy wouldn't know and he'd carry on playing with its corpse. I know, super creepy, but let's think about it for a minute. If Andy doesn't know that his toys come alive when he leaves the room, logically, he would have no clue that they could die. So technically speaking, yeah, he could totally just be playing with dead toy corpses unknowingly. That being said, some fans aren't 
so sure as they pointed out that the alive toys would probably either bury or at least hide the toys so as not to have to watch or worse play with their dead friends. However, all that in mind, the sheer idea of the toys being able to die is still super awful. Next up at number six, Cars. What's not to love about the Cars movie? Spoiled race car moves to small town, hates it at first, but eventually makes new unsuspecting friends, falls in love, and becomes a good person or car happily ever after. But according to some online, the entire world that Cars is set in could be way darker than we ever thought. The theory states that Cars is set incredibly far in the future, like we're talking beyond the Wally timeline, wherein the Earth has become completely void of humans and is now only populated by sentient vehicles. Now, that part isn't too crazy. I mean, it's not hard to piece together that it's a world made up of cars that are kind of human-like, but it's an animated movie after all so most people don't think too hard about it. But have we ever thought about how or why all the humans are gone? This evil theory claims that cars killed them all, and then using their advanced AI technologies, adopted the personalities of their previous owners. So not only are they killer cars, they would pretty much be identity theft killer robots too. Next up at number five, Monsters Inc. and Inside Out. It's a pretty popular belief that all the movies in the Disney Pixar canon exist in the same universe, meaning that there is a huge potential for quite a bit of crossover, and Reddit user Ice Metal Punk theorizes a pretty dark concept revolving around the crossover of Inside Out and Monsters Inc. The theory begins by explaining that in Inside Out, we learn that everything forgotten gets dropped into the memory dump, then disappears forever. We see this happen with Bing Bong, Riley's imaginary friend, but did you ever really stop to think about where their forgotten memories actually disappear to? I mean, they have to go somewhere, right? Well, according to this Reddit user, they suggest that the monsters in Monsters Inc. are actually the imaginary friends that humans forget as they grow up, and that the creatures had to learn to live together and form a functioning society. Not only that, but if you also consider the fact that the monsters are scaring their carefully selected tiny humans at the beginning of the movie, would that mean that they are trying to scare the very people who they once were the imaginary friend of? Also does the memory dump affect them? Like do they remember their human from before or is this just some random client to them? I don't know, I have many questions, but mostly I just hope it's not true. Coming in at number four, clean energy. Speaking of Monsters Inc. theories, I feel pretty confident saying that this one is probably the strongest strangest and most gruesome I came across. Posted by Reddit user Curly Quickly Colorful, they suggest that Monsters Inc. did not always use screams to make their energy, but once upon a time used blood. Okay? I know what you're thinking, but just stay with me for a minute. They explain that early on in the movie, you hear a commercial coming from Sully's TV talking about producing superior screams that they can refine into clean, dependable energy. And Reddit user suggests that, quote, if the concept of clean energy exists in this world and they find the need to point it out in their advertising, logic would dictate that a different, theoretically dirtier form of energy was harvested and utilized to power Monstropolis before screams. And of course, what is the grossest, most awful thing they could harvest? Well, blood. And as much as I hope to God this theory isn't true, I can kind of see where they came up with it. I mean, if we think about energy in the real world, there is clean energy, like solar power, compared to dirtier energy, like oil. And I suppose blood could be like the oil of the monster world? I don't know. I don't want to think about this one too hard. Coming in at number three, Wally's true identity. While I definitely do not want a robot takeover of the world, if there is one robot who I would gladly share the planet with, it's Wally. I mean, not only is he the most adorable thing in the world, making little trash cubes and listening to musicals, but he also saves the world and eventually helps the humans return back home. Or at least that is what most people probably believe. Some, however, have a more cynical view of who Wally really is. And they think that he is not a hero at all, but that he is Satan. Yep, you heard that correctly. 
Let me just read you the quote. We have an entity, Wally slash Satan, who gives an object, seedling slash apple, to a robot slash woman named Eve, which starts a chain of events that led to mankind losing a paradise and getting stranded on Earth. They then go on to explain that, quote, by the end of the movie, mankind has made its return to Earth, but they no longer lead an easygoing, carefree life. Now they must perform backbreaking labor in order to bring Earth back to a habitable state, leaving the relative paradise of the axiom behind. Inevitably, this will lead to inequity and resource disparity, which in turn will lead to conflict, strife, and jealousy, which will lead to anger, hatred, and war, and perhaps the eventual re-destruction of the planet Earth. Then, once more, humans will be forced to leave their homeworld behind, floating through space in search of a better life, seeking the paradise they lost after the plant bearer tempted Eve. I mean, it's hard to get more evil than Satan, and the most lovable character somehow being evil incarnate is just about the worst thing I can think of. Coming in at number two, Wally Universe. While we're on the topic of strange theories about the beloved robot, a video posted on YouTube by user MattPat has a chilling theory that will definitely be keeping me awake at night. MattPat begins by explaining that the idea that the Earth could be completely covered in trash in the time frame that the film sets it up in is not only unrealistic, but impossible. Instead, he theorized that the planet was not actually destroyed by human greed, as the viewers are led to believe, but instead that, by and large, the giant monopoly company purposefully ruined it. He says, quote, We see abandoned buildings, light poles, street signs, and other indicators that this once was a thriving metropolis. This indicates the breakdown of one of the most basic things for a modern society to function, a waste management system that transports waste out of the city towards landfills. Pat says that from the looks of it, Starliners were designed as a luxury space cruise, but the company couldn't convince people to go on their holidays, so they had to find a way to force people onto these ships, and that essentially, in order to force Earth's population onto the BNL ships like Axiom, they stopped funding waste management, convinced the people it was their fault, and drove them to live on the ship where they would have no choice but to consume all BNL products for the rest of of their lives. I mean, talk about evil. Last up in our number one spot is Nemo. Since its release in 2003, the story of Nemo has stolen the hearts of people all around the globe. But what if I told you that some people out there are questioning the wholesome story of a dad looking for his lost son, and that maybe it could actually be much darker than meets the eye. As we know, the beginning of the film starts off incredibly somber. Marlin and his wife are attacked by a barracuda, and tragically his wife along with all but one egg are eaten, and that one remaining egg grows to be Nemo, whom Marlin is incredibly protective of. But Reddit user Darklighter5000 suggests that the Barracuda actually ate all the eggs, and that Marlin, struggling to cope with his reality, creates a world where one survives, meaning that Nemo is entirely a figment of Marlin's imagination, and that we're watching Marlin deal with his grief by inventing a story where he's trying to save save his son. This theory is backed by a few points, the first being that Nemo in Latin means no one, and so the title of the film is technically Finding No One. The second is that the show goes through the different stages of grief. Denial, he won't let his son go to school because it's not safe. Then anger, he scolds his son for venturing out of his control. Next, bargaining, he makes friends with an amnesiac travel buddy to help him find his son, followed by despair. He sees his son flush down the drain, and lastly, acceptance. He learns to let go. What do you think? Could Nemo really be dead? Well, there you have it guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know down in the comments the most evil fan theory you've ever heard about. I'll see you next time.